This was a good choice. I made a good choice. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where I talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. If this is the kind of content that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. So I have a very exciting unboxing for you today that I bought from eBay from Brand JFA in Japan. Now Brand JFA is a very reputable and very well-known Japanese reseller on eBay and I believe they have their own website and they might even have their own actual like physical stores in Japan. Now in Japan counterfeiting is very 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 illegal and you have to go through a lot of different hoops and get licenses in order to sell and deal with certain things especially like luxury goods. So well-established companies like Brand JFA are very trustworthy to buy from and very reliable. I still would get my bag third-party authenticated if I personally had some concerns or issues with it, but just from buying from them outright, I don't have any problem with recommending them as a company to buy from, even on eBay. Now again, this bag was shipped from Japan in, with DHL and I got free shipping and the bag was under $800 and in America, which is where I am based, you don't have to pay customs and duties for any imported goods that are under $800. So if you buy something that's $801, you do have to pay customs and duties on it, depending on where it's being shipped from. But from Japan, it is an $800 minimum. So under $800, you're not required to pay customs and duties. You are required to pay taxes if you are in a state that does have taxation. So I had to pay taxes on this purchase, like I would have to pay taxes on any purchase that I bought in America, but I didn't have to pay customs, so that was really nice. I also, in my opinion, got a really good deal on this bag, but I'll explain more about that after I unpackage it. So as you can see, this is a flat package with just pretty nondescript DHL packaging on it. It is probably not stuffed, and I would be very surprised if it was in some way stuffed because it's flat. And this is a vintage Louis Vuitton piece, so I wasn't expecting any type of fancy packaging, especially not from Brand JFA, who I have purchased from before. So as a note, if you do buy vintage Louis Vuitton from Brand JFA, and it's some kind of this bag that can be squished flat, it's going to be squished flat. And for Louis Vuitton, I mean, that's pretty typical of them. Louis Vuitton themselves don't even package their bags all fancy. And even like speedies will come collapsed. You can request that they be put into a big box, not collapsed, but automatically they do package them collapsed flat for you because they are supposed to be transportable. And I'm rambling, so I'm going to just get into this. Obviously, I want to be very careful as I cut into this because I don't want to potentially damage the bag inside. And the first thing you can see is a bunch of protective bubble wrap, and that's something nice to note, that even if the bags aren't stuffed, they are at least plastic protected. Now some of you will see me not react happily to packaging that hasn't included things like plastic or bubble wrap, and that is because I live in a fairly rainy area and I've had packages arrive to be soaked before, and for expensive items I would prefer some sort of plastic packaging in order to protect the item inside. And that's not atypical for even luxury brands, Louis Vuitton just throws their bags and items in like a dust bag in a box, so those don't have any protection at all. But it's nice to have that care afforded to the expensive goods that you're buying. Okay, here it is, or kind of what you can see of it, and this bottom might give you a clue that it is completely wrapped in the bubble wrap, which again I do appreciate because it protects it from the elements. Now the bag itself was plastic, so I wouldn't be as concerned as if it were a cardboard box, but still it's, it's nice to have this afforded to it. And I always reuse my bubble wrap packaging for stuffing or for when I send packages out. So it doesn't go to waste. Like I don't throw this stuff away. I'm really excited about this. Okay. And it's got like a little bit of a static kind of cover, static protection cover on the inside too, which is nice. All right. Oh yeah, it's like a, it's like a kind of a dust bag almost. Well, I mean, it is a dust bag. It's just a very thin, it feels like a laundry static sheet. Okay. I mean, obviously you can see what it is, but. Ta-da! All right. So this is a Louis Vuitton Cabas Mezzo. Now the Cabas series was introduced, I believe, in 2000 or 2001, but I, I think 2000 till 2007 or 2009, but don't quote me on those dates. It had a slight redesign in 2004 or 5 where they changed the inner zip pocket to just a slip pocket, 
But other than that, it has been pretty much unchanged or was unchanged until it was discontinued. Now, this is the meso size, and that is the in-between size. There's the piano, the meso, and the alto. The alto is the biggest, the piano is the smallest, and the kabas piano and the kabas meso have zippers, and the kabas alto does not. And mostly they are compared to the Neverfull. So the kabas piano is compared to the Neverfull PM, the meso is more compared to the Neverfull MM, and the alto is compared to the Neverfull's GM. Now, though the kabas line was actually very popular, some people did shy away from it because of the giant Vichetta strip on the bottom and the sides. People were worried about wear and tear, understandably, especially with spills and putting it on surfaces and getting the corners worn off, but that's never bothered me. Now, there are some really good things to like about the kabas line. First of all, they have a really good strap drop. They have the most beloved thing, a zipper for a tote. They have a nice roomy inside that I consider a nice roomy interior. And they're a really good size, especially because of their shape, the way that they're built. They are built fairly similar to the Neverfulls in that they have a wide base bottom, although this is much more uh, sturdy than the Neverfull because it is full Vachetta. I actually also have the Kabas Piano. I bought this vintage pre-loved. This is from 2001 and I was not buying Louis Vuitton in 2001. I actually also bought this from Japan from an auction a while back and I really love it. It's an excellent size for a small little day bag, super roomy. And I'm planning on doing a video about this actually a little bit later down the line, but I just wanted to talk about the meso really quick. So the inside of the Kabas meso is actually pretty, pretty nice. You've got, you've got this one teeny tiny for a teeny tiny cell phone pocket that will not fit in my cell phone now. And then you've got this zip pocket here. So like this zip pocket here. And this zip was actually turned into a flap in the later rendition of the kibas bag. It just doesn't have a zip on some of the later pieces. So if you find a kibas meso that doesn't have a zip, that doesn't mean it's counterfeit. That just means that it was made after like 2004, 2005. And then this bag was, you know, it was made in France here. And the Vichetta in general is just really, really nice. There's a little key ring on this side over here. And underneath that key ring is where the date code is, the date stamp. And otherwise it's just a big empty hole. So if you're wanting to get an organizer for it, you can do that. I probably won't, honestly. I usually put my things in pouches anyway, so I wouldn't be super concerned about organization in, inside this bag, but you can if you want to. And yeah, I just, it's really good. It's really good. And I bought this on auction as well. It was starting a bit at 99 cents. And that's pretty typical of a lot of Japanese auctions. They'll start at a really low bid and just people will bid it up and bid it up and bid it up. And sometimes you get lucky. I followed this bag till the very last day of the auction just to kind of see how it was progressing. And I wanted this bag in particular because I've been looking at a number of mesos. I'd really wanted a meso for a while. This bag was at, I believe, 280 when I placed my bid and I placed the max bid of 315 just to kind of see. And I actually won it for the 280. I won it for my low ball bid. And I got this plus tax for under $300, which I think is really good for what it is. So a couple details about this bag really quick and why I wanted this bag in particular is because of the wear that it didn't have and, and also the wear that it did have. Now, this bag had a pretty clean Vichetta bottom, all things considered. It had some wear at the corners you see here. And here, there's some wear here but none of the corners are broken through. None of the canvas is worn through to the inner lining where it's just the thread. So it's completely intact on the corners, which that's something to watch for. If you're buying a vintage bag, especially something that has these kinds of corners like a kibas, then you wanna check if this part is worn through, if the canvas is worn through, because those are often the first things to wear. Second, the handles. Now these handles do have some cracks on them and that's pretty unavoidable for a bag of this age. And I believe this bag is from 2001. Let me just double check here. Yeah, this bag is from 2001. So it looks pretty good from 20 years old, huh? I think it does anyway. Now these handles, you can see there's some dehydration wear and cracking, but that's something I'm planning on doing to this bag. I'm planning to treat it with leather conditioner 
And there isn't any like blackness. They're not blackened with dirt or with age. They're pretty well kept, especially for being 20 years old, which is something that I also wanted. Same thing with the Bichetta on the bottom. Like there's somewhere in tear, there's this part over here, this thing that looks kind of like some pen marks or something. But for the most part, it's not blackened with dirt. And blackness is a sign of like actual dirt, dirty stuff that you can't really clean up. But this is just a really pretty Vachetta color, in my opinion, for something, again, of this age, 20 years old. And I'm going to be cleaning it up, and I think that it'll clean up very nicely. Same thing with the zipper. Like, it's obviously very tarnished. I'm going to do some cleanup with this. I'm going to probably shine up the zipper. But this is a nice, like, thick, this is the nice, uh, big, thick zipper that was in the original Cabasas that it was changed to a smaller zipper with the revamp. Now, one of the reasons this bag was priced the way it was is because there was some canvas cracking that was very clearly disclosed in pictures. And let's see if I can find it to show you because that was actually one of the reasons I did buy this bag. So there is a little bit of canvas cracking and it's very minimal. I'm gonna scooch forward here. It's very minimal and it is over here where the handle meets the, the bag. I'm gonna see if I can't show you. I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to show it to you because of how minimal it is. Like right there, there's a little crack in the canvas. But again, like minimal. And then here also at the edge corner, which again is not uncommon for bags of this type. There is some cracking just over here. Over here, yeah, like that little part right here is a crack. Again, very, very minimal. And finally, one of the reasons that it was, again, priced the way it was is because there is a rip in the strap here. You see how it attaches all the way, but then there's that like little rip on that side. And it's uh, not an insubstantial rip, I wouldn't want to hold the bag just from this end because that would put a lot of pressure on it. But holding the bag, especially from both straps, will distribute the weight enough that I wouldn't be concerned about this completely ripping off, especially not at first. And I want to repair it. I'm going to repair it myself. And that's partially why I got this bag. I really have been wanting a kibasa meso for a while and I wanted a kibasa meso and I wanted a kibasa meso for a reasonable price in good condition but I knew that I wasn't going to be able to find perfect condition. And since I wasn't going to be able to find perfect condition, I wanted one that was reasonably priced that I could work on. I, as some of you might know, I'm very into vintage pieces, vintage Chanel, vintage Louis Vuitton, vintage Coach. And I actually do rehab. I do bag rehab and refurbishment. In fact, most of the vintage Coach bags, if not all the vintage Coach bags in my collection were found by me in thrift stores or online for really, really inexpensive. And then I wash them, I condition them, I buff them, I clean them up and they, they look beautiful now, most of them. And I do want to do a video actually on a rehabilitation from a coach bag that I have that's very awful. And I do plan to make it brand new again or as new as I can get it. And also show you some comparisons between some before and afters. For instance, this was a vintage bucket bag that I found in a thrift store a while back. And it was one of my very first rehab projects. It was, I think like $20 after I got a half off coupon on it. And I, you know, I decided to take a chance and take one of my very first projects and clean it up. And I think it cleaned up really well. It was squished and sad and super dehydrated when I first got it. And I think afterwards it looks beautiful. So that was one of my very first rehab projects. And I've been sort of hooked ever since. I have done rehab for Louis Vuitton before, so I'm really confident in my abilities to clean up the very few flaws that are in this bag, particularly in the strap. I want to reinforce the strap a little bit and I might work on the cracks in the canvas, but it depends on how I feel about it because they honestly really aren't that bad. Like, the pictures looked a lot worse than they are in person, to be perfectly frank. I do want to recondition all of the straps because they are pretty horrendously dehydrated. And you can see here, like that's that poor strap. Like it's, it's, it's cracking for a reason, but the Vichetta on the bottom feels smooth and nice and pretty luxurious, uh, worn with time and 
you know, proper use. So I'm really excited about this bag. It's also, as I, you know, it's also a great size for like bigger trips. I personally never wanted to own a Neverfull because I don't like the openness of it. I don't like that you can't close it. And I don't love how floppy it is. This is a much more structured bag. And some people might not like that. I personally really do. You can fit a lot in this bag. And even in the Kavas Piano, which is deceptively small, you can fit quite a lot in. And I think this would be a really good, like, work bag or going out for a while bag and i just i really like it if you're interested in the what fits or a detailed review of this bag or even the kvass piano let me know i'll be happy to make a video of that especially once i clean this up a little bit more i can also do a comparison between this bag and the kvass piano in size if you're interested in the kvass bag they are discontinued so they're only available on resale websites but ebay is a really good place to check especially as i said like brand jfa brand reaction these are all reputable Japanese sellers who've been in the business for a long time and have a really good reputation. So yeah, I'm really happy with my purchase. I think this is a beautiful vintage bag. I think that the patina on the monogram canvas is really nice. The honey vachetta patina is also really nice. Like I wasn't expecting this to be in as good shape as it was really. I was expecting it to have more more wear on it and I was perfectly willing to buy it with more wear on it so this was a really pleasant surprise that's actually pretty typical of a lot of Japanese sellers I found like they'll rate it to very very high standards and then you get it and you're like this is amazing that's the problem here another thing that I do want to mention and that I really like about this bag is that there's no odor when I unpackaged my Kavas piano back back when I bought it it did have a fairly strong musty odor I utilized baking soda charcoal packets airing it out and also the sun technique in order to remove the odor from it and I was fairly successful it doesn't really have any odor anymore especially not now after all this time but this does not have any odor at all and from a 20 year old bag that I don't know where it's been, I don't know how it's packaged, like that's pretty good. I will be thoroughly cleaning and disinfecting this bag before I obviously treat it with the conditioner and stuff. And I will also be thoroughly washing my hands after this unboxing, don't you worry. If you're interested in seeing how I do clean a canvas bag, especially an older one like this, feel free to let me know. I probably won't get to this rehab project for a little bit of time just because I've got a lot going on and a couple other rehab projects on my, on my plate right now. I just really wanted to unbox this for you and share this with you and share my excitement in it because I'm really pleased with this vintage piece. And, uh, but yeah, let me know if you're interested in just kind of like a process of like how to disinfect and clean a vintage canvas bag and clean the vachetta without damaging it or darkening it in some way. I'd also would be happy to share my conditioning technique and stuff like that too. So, you know, just, just let me know. <laughs> this is so exciting. I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. Also, the canvas is so nice. It's supple and soft, but it's not thin. Like you can really tell the difference between this canvas and modern canvas, honestly. Like it's, it's thick and it's malleable in a way that good canvas is. And I think that really speaks to the quality of this piece. The patina is gorgeous on it, as I probably have already said before. You can really tell the difference between vintage Louis Vuitton canvas and current Louis Vuitton canvas. And I have opinions on how a lot of brands have modernized a lot of their quality of materials, but there's a noticeable difference between this and current canvas in terms of the thinness and the malleability of it. Like this, this feels really sturdy and feels like a really good knock around, use it all the time piece that will really stand up and hold up and clearly has. This is from 2001. It is 20 years old. I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy to have shared this with you. If you have any questions about buying vintage Louis Vuitton or other pieces online or in person, feel free to let me know. I'd be happy to answer your comments or questions or make a video on it. You can also DM me on Instagram. I'm classes with a quirk, all one word. I am always happy to chat and talk about stuff like this. And, you know, just sharing my love of these types of goods and this quality of the goods and the care and keeping of these pieces. Also in regards to the care and keeping of your bags, I did recently make a video on what not to do with your Chanel bags and specifically on ways to not store them and ways to store them in order to protect the bag and preserve the longevity of the bag and of the leather. So I'd suggest checking that out too. I'll link it above and below. It's a fun video and I touch on a couple topics that I have seen other YouTubers recommend where I'm like, just please don't do that, please. I, I, if you like this video, please do give it a like because it super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content because it helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Not a bad
on zipper for 20 years old. And now I'm going to wash my hands. <laughs>